Let us now move to the third module which talks about efficiency the next need for human factors. In this module we shall take a close look at human performance and its limitations. We learned in our previous module about safety and that as humans we all make mistakes but our vigilance may save lives. Vigilance starts with us and to understand us better we need to understand what we call human information processing which is how we think, how we make decisions and what actions we take. Our eyes, ears, nose send us various signals which the human brain processes and understands and then takes a decision based on it. Professor, we should explain this in a little more detail. Of course, Professor. Our senses provide various inputs to our brain, which organizes and interprets it in a manner that we can use, discarding what is irrelevant and retaining what is important. This is what we call perception. The first input comes from our senses, vision, hearing, smell or olfaction, taste, touch. Our senses help us perform our daily activities. As you can see, this man is on his regular workday routine and is performing all activities without any problem. Now, let us see what happens when we take away one of his senses, that is vision. Now let's see what happens when we create a disturbance with his hearing. As you just saw, interfering with a person's vision or hearing can create problems in performance. Professor, let us first understand the most important of our senses, vision, for which we need to know what is VA or visual acuity. All of us must have seen this board when we've gone to get our eyes checked. How clearly we see the letters and numbers on the board is how we measure visual acuity or clearness of vision. What can affect our vision, Professor? Many things. One, physical factors, which are imperfections in one or both eyes, like short or long sightedness. Two, ingested substances, Smoking, drinking alcohol, taking recreational drugs all affect our vision. We need to also remember that even some medically recommended drugs can also affect our vision. Lighting, too little or even too much lighting leads to poor vision. Vision is affected as much by darkness as by too much glare. 4. The object being viewed. Vision may also become unclear due to what we are looking at, how far the object is from us, the size and shape of the object and whether it is merging with its surroundings or standing out in contrast, how quickly the object being viewed is moving and the angle at which we are seeing it from. 5. Color vision. 8% of males and about 0.5% of females suffer from color blindness which is an inability to distinguish between colors, most commonly between red and green. 6. Age We also have to remember that the older we get, the more our vision deteriorates. What can we do to protect our vision, Professor? There are various things we can do. 1. Diet We can take care of our eyesight by eating the correct food. Carrots, green leafy vegetables, Fish and flaxseed all help in protecting our eyes. 2. Wear sunglasses. We don't realize that sunlight has UV rays that are harmful to our vision. We need to wear proper sunglasses that give 100% UV protection in all weather to protect our eyes. The amber brown range offers the best protection. Remember, the effect of sunlight is even more intense in areas that reflect glare. We could also wear a wide-brimmed hat 
for extra protection. 3. Eye Lube Our eyes need to be lubricated for better vision and protection against deterioration. Both heat as well as air conditioning cause dry eyes. So when we are indoors, we need to ensure that the AC vents are not blowing directly into our face. Eating oily fish and flaxseed also helps preventing dry eyes. 4. Quit smoking. Need another excuse? Smoking affects eyesight, so quit smoking today. 5. And finally, very importantly, regular checkups. We need to get our eyes checked regularly so that any problem can be detected and corrected at an early stage. We need to get our eyes checked at least once before we're 30, at least twice between 30 and 40, and every two to four years after we cross 40. Shall we now move on to the next important sense, hearing? Yes, the process of perceiving sound. But let us start with the difference between sound and noise. Sound is what we hear. Noise is any sound that is noticeably unpleasant. It is important for us to understand sound in the aviation industry for one simple reason. The normal decibel levels or sound levels that human beings are subject to is between 30 and 100. Above 120 dB may result in ear discomfort and a 140 dB sound may rupture your eardrum. Any guesses what is the decibel level of a jet engine taking off? 130 to 160 dB. Exposure to such high decibel levels for such long periods results in various problems. Physiological, which is discomfort in the ears, eardrum rupture, and even permanent hearing impairment. Psychological, such as irritability, fatigue, poor sleep quality, headaches, vertigo and nausea. Noise can also interfere with normal speech, making it difficult to understand. Finally, sustained exposure to noise affects performance by causing distraction and increasing the possibility of mistakes. Since we now know that noise adversely affects our health and performance, we need to always take steps to protect our hearing. The first step is to be aware of the noise level we are being exposed to and ensuring that we limit our actual hours of exposure. Secondly, always wear protective equipment when sustained exposure to high decibels is unavoidable due to the job profile, as happens in the airline industry. Earmuffs, earplugs, communication headsets. And Professor, what is to be noted is that use of these protective equipment not only save us from physical and psychological problems, but also help improve efficiency by filtering out high-frequency background and making voice communication that much easier. Our senses provide the inputs which are then stored in various ways in our memory. What is interesting is that even our memory is of different kinds. Ultra short term, which retains an exact copy of what is seen or heard for just a few seconds, like a snapshot. Short term memory allows us to store the information for just the duration required to use it usually about 20 seconds. Long-term memory, the capacity for which appears to be unlimited and which stores information that may not be used at all times, but which can be retrieved as and when required. So, Professor, memory is nothing but registering information, storing it, retrieving it when required. But, Professor, this does not mean that each time we perform an action, we have to first think about it, right? Absolutely not. Humans have what is known as motor programs. You see, when we perform any task repetitively, it becomes a part of our long-term memory and we can perform these tasks without having to think about it. For example, when we first start driving, 
we have to think about each step. But once we have learnt it, we can perform it automatically without giving it any thought. To sum up and return once again to the human information processing model. This man was operating a forklift relying on his motor programs. His sense alerted him that something was wrong. His memory told him that crashes at speed cause damage. He took the action of applying the brakes and an accident was avoided. This is what we call in a word situation awareness or simply being aware of what is going on around you being able to predict what is going to happen and taking a decision based on it. Well, that all seemed very hunky-dory, didn't it? But always remember that the human brain is fallible. We may have faced some interference during receipt of information. We may have received half the information and assumed the other half due to prior knowledge, which may have been incorrect. We may have received the correct information but our mind rejects it to try and fit it into something which we believe is more correct. For example, what do you see in this picture? Well, Professor, I see a human face. But if you look closely, you will see that it is actually the word liar. But our prior knowledge of human faces makes us reject what it is and see something else. As a result, our perception may not be correct and decisions based on incorrect perception might be wrong. We finally move on to the last part of this module which is the limitations of human memory. We may see something but not remember it. Very often we think we remember something but actually we may have forgotten one crucial step in a process and sometimes although we know something. It has remained unused for so long that we are unable to retrieve it. In short, human beings forget. That brings us to the end of our third module on efficiency and human information processing. We have learned that while we have remarkable abilities to understand, learn, take decisions and perform, we also have our limitations. Thank you.